All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. This is Left Bank Books welcomes St. Louis area Bram Stoker Award shortlisted horror and dark fiction author John F.T. Taft who, uh, to discuss a tribute to horror's longstanding short fiction legacy, Dark Stars, New Tales of Darkest Horror. This event will feature contributors John F.D. Taft, Josh Mallerman, and Caroline Kepnitz. Left Bank Books is St. Louis's oldest independent bookstore. We would like to thank all of our supporters, the supporters of John, Josh, and Caroline, and everyone for their outpouring of love for our bookstore. We offer in-store shopping, curbside pickup, and delivery to anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. We are happy to be able to bring our event series virtual. We believe that events are a way to expand your mind and bring in new thoughts to make the world a better place. In this case, the new thoughts are dark and terrifying. So we hope that you enjoyed this event, and we hope that you support Left Bank Books by purchasing a copy for you or for all of your friends on our website at left-bank.com, and I will share a direct link as well. Purchasing a copy of the book from Left Bank Books allows us to keep our bookstore and staff operating, and it allows us to continue bringing you incredible authors like the authors that we have this evening. So thank you so much for your support. I am Shane Mullen. I am the events coordinator for Left Bank Books. We produce hundreds of author events each year with a fantastic team here in St. Louis. We will be taking questions from you, the audience, at the end of the event, so you can type your questions as a comment, and you can do that at any point in time as you think of the question. And be sure to follow Left Bank Books on Facebook and YouTube to be notified about all of our fantastic virtual events. And now, about tonight's book. Dark Stars, edited by John F.D. Taff, is a tribute to horror's long-standing short fiction legacy featuring 12 terrifying original stories from today's most noteworthy authors. Within these pages, you'll find tales of dead men walking, an insidious secret summer fling, an island harboring unspeakable powers, and a dark hallway that beckons. You'll encounter terrible monsters, both human and supernatural, and be forever changed. The stories in Dark Stars run the gamut from traditional to modern, from dark fantasy to neo-noir, from explorations of beloved horror tropes to the unknown, possibly unknowable threats. It's all in here, because it's all out there now, in horror. This is created as an homage to the 1980 classic horror anthology Dark Forces, edited by Kirby McCauley. Dark Stars also features an introduction by Josh Mallerman and an afterward from original contributor Ramsey Campbell, a poignant finale to this bone-chilling collection. And now about tonight's speakers, tonight's authors. John F.D. Taff is a Bram Stoker Award shortlisted horror and dark fiction author with more than 25 years experience and more than 100 short stories and seven novels in print. He has appeared in Cemetery Dance, Eldritch Tales, Unnerving, Death Realm, Big Pulp, and One Buck Horror. Recent anthology contributions include The Seven Deadliest and I Can Hear the Shadows. Taft's novella collection, The End in All Beginnings, was called one of the best novella collections by Jack Ketchum and was a Stoker Award finalist. Josh Mallerman is a New York Times bestselling author and one of two singer-songwriters for the rock band The High Strung. His debut novel, Bird Box, is the inspiration for the hit Netflix film of the same name. His other novels include Unbury Carol, Inspection, A House at the Bottom of a Lake, and Mallory, the sequel to Bird Box. Mallerman lives in Chicago with his fiance, the artist-musician Allison Lacko. Carolyn Kepnes is the New York Times bestselling author of You, Hidden Bodies, Providence, and You Love Me. Her work has been translated into a multitude of languages and inspired a television series adaptation of You currently on Netflix. Kepnes graduated from Brown University and then worked as a pop culture journalist for Entertainment Weekly and a TV writer for Seventh Heaven and The Secret Life of the American Teenager. She grew up in Cape Cod and now lives in Los Angeles. And now, if you would all please help me in welcoming our guest for the evening, John F.D. Taff, 
Josh Mallerman, and Caroline Kepnes for Left Bank Books. Hello. 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 Hey, hey, hey. We have well, a fantastic crowd here, so I'm going to turn the conversation over to you for this terrifying evening. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. <laughs> You're going to go make earmuffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess we should start by, uh, you know, and I guess this is a good question for me to ask. What, uh, for both of you, what appealed to you about this project when we first talked about it? And I know Josh... This goes back to the very beginning of the idea that we had to do this. But uh, what was it that appealed to you about the project? And and why did it seem like something that that uh, you want to be part of? And, and you had a story that could actually lend itself to this. I'll start with you, Josh, because it goes back the longest. OK, um, working with you is was number one number two is the no theme thing the no theme like anything yeah. goes and i always i've always been more attracted to those kind of anthologies just i don't know maybe and maybe i'm wrong for thinking that way um but in terms of a, as a writer i'm usually like oh wow i can do anything anything goes and it's almost like i have to like check myself then you know what i mean like we need some reality in this story don't we <laughs> but that's super appealing for me and then I already had um, the idea for Mrs. Addison's Nest. I hadn't written it, mm -hmm. but I had the idea. And so when you and I were talking, I, I knew that the stories in here would be a little bit longer on the longer end. And that felt like right to me. I was like, okay, this is one that, so you, the format and had an idea I was excited about. Yeah. What about you, Caroline? Because it, and is it Caroline or Caroline? It, I'm a line. Thank you. Okay. Line. Um, what about you? Because you've been you've been showing up with some short fiction in some horror stuff right now. But I think probably if most people are familiar with you, they're probably familiar with you as more of a thriller writer. Yeah. Um, so what is it about this that, you know, called to you? It was similar to what Josh just said. I mean, it was a lot you. I just love talking to oh. you and wanted to be part of it for that. And I too, I also like the idea that there there wasn't a theme for this. It was at yeah. that moment the moment in time and it was like I had this word that I'd been playing with and I wanted to write it and for me an anthology knowing it would be in a horror anthology was like right. a very cool way to write a story hoping yeah. that it would be in there and yes and getting to see everyone else's early too that's a bonus had either of you two uh read dark forces before this came up I've read almost all of it I've made it up to the cartoons <laughs> up to the cartoons that's like the opposite of normal you know what i mean yeah yeah that's like the most pretentious thing i've i, I read everything except for the, the only thing i didn't look at was the illustrations and do the cartoons <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, for me, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because uh dark stars was a pretty uh foundational. Uh, short fiction collection for me. I was about 17 uh, when it came out. You can do the math and reverse to figure out how old I am. Uh, but for each of you, is there a, a foundational kind of short or even a novel that that really set you on the path to becoming the writer that you are now? Um, and we'll start with you, Caroline. I'm going to go with Joyce Carol Oates with Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? I think it was a combination of like the age that I read it. And I just, I remember finishing it and feeling so gross and so wonderful and just immediately reading it over and over again and like shoving it down everyone's throats. And I'd always like before that with horror, I knew like, you know, Stephen King, Clive, like right. all of like things that you think of. And I guess like I, that story just opened my world and I felt like it was the way it looked like, like this, you know, calm peaceful place and it was and then about this woman and the way also it ended with this feeling that like everything bad was just about to happen and right. that 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 was horror for me that like it was so about that dread yeah. and leave something with like the very opposite of a happy ending <laughs> it's funny because uh joyce carol oates was one of was the in people that were in the original dark forces so yes she was that's, well, that's yeah, kind of funny that that. <laughs> yeah what about you josh well, a few come to mind. First of all, I love that short story, Caroline. And also, like, I've never really been able to find it, like, 
in the wild in a book. Mm -hmm. I'm always looking online for like, where can I find it? And I've never really, have you ever spotted that one in the wild? I can send you a link. I do have a collection in Massachusetts that it's published in, like in paper. And I don't okay. have it with me here or I would go grab it. But yeah, but if you okay. Google the phrase, you it is online somewhere. All right, all right, all right. It can um, take some I have deep Googling, but I can send you a link. <laughs> some of the pillars for me were Moby Dick is a major one. Because yeah, me too. I couldn't get over the energy. I still can't get over like the energy in that book. Right. And, and it's, you know, when you're younger and you're presented with what would be a classic, you, you're, it, first of all, you're a little intimidated. You're a little daunted by the size of a book like that. Right. You're, you're like, am I going to be able to understand? Like, you don't know yet who you are, right? Am I going to be able, able to even understand this? Right. And then same thing happened with uh, Faulkner for me also and Virginia Woolf, where hmm. I was like, okay, I'm just going to read these. And not only understood it, but like discovered in them almost like borderline thrillers. Like yeah. Brother Amazov is like, it's really after you get through a hundred pages of like family counseling at this monastery, it's like a who done it. Right. It's like dad dies, who killed him? And I would, I would have. There was a point in my life where I would have been afraid to take that leap. Once I took that leap and saw that the that thriller framework in Dostoevsky to see, see the energy behind Whitman, Poe, um, Moby Dick. I was like, oh shit. And then I had gone on sort of this bender where I was reading, you know how Barnes and Noble would have those, the, their, their covers of the like, classic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm not right. So I'm like <laughs> going down the line, like, all right, Jane Eyre. And I hear, you know, like just going down and it brought me to Dracula. And I had read horror when I was younger. And then I got to Dracula and I'm reading it. And I was like, oh shit, here's, it was like the culmination of everything I was into in one place. Right. Where it was like, genre and horror and like uh, imaginative and colorful, but also a classic, also a, as good as anything else I had ever read. So a number of pillars, but I, I do think that Moby Dick probably would have sent me down like, hey, if you can um, capture lightning like this, then then you set them yeah. up. It's funny, and, and you both can talk about this, that, because uh, I feel the same way that you do, Josh, that you you when you write this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff that we both all three of us do, that when you look at other stories, other novels that aren't categorized as horror per se, but you can see the horror in the book. You can right. see the horror, even though they're not promoting the book as a horror book or a thriller book or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, since we do all this, we kind of can look into those stories and kind of see the the mechanisms that they're using or the framework that they built the story on that that seems very much kind of taken from horror so i i thought that was an interesting that was an interesting point and to discover in yourself that's what you're drawn to right, right? right. i remember that's another thing because you would hear like on the playground you'd hear about a movie like texas chainsaw massacre i remember um i was watching tv with my dad and there was a, like a shot from behind of a guy at the bottom of a set of stairs looking up the stairs yelling mother and my dad leaps up and runs to the tv and turns it off and i just saw like psycho 2 or something like that. <laughs> and i was like what was that and he's like no 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 that you you can't no 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 that's not for you you can't see that and i was like no what was that you know <laughs> and like and to discover that like wait a minute these aren't just like rumors on the playground or like the uh oh, the section in the bookstore where it's all like black spines with blood red letters right these were i were so you were kind of shied away from horror as a, as a kid a or, or I just like nobody told me like right. nobody was like this is you right you know and so like in the video store everyone always references and rightfully so the how all the movies were facing out and mom would be walking to the uh, recent releases and i'm like doo, 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 like walking yeah. that aisle, like looking at wolves coming out of mouths and like eyes like on skulls following you right and so there was a sense of like this is home right away right like just whatever that meant and like wanting almost you know sometimes i'll see someone online um what's the right phrase i don't know if they're offended or whatever when somebody says like you know why are you into that you know or you write crazy stuff or whatever but i like the fact that i'm in a genre that's like weird to people i like that it's Absolutely, yeah. up or perverted or like crazy or or wrong or whatever it right. is and i've always been like drawn to that element of it that it felt like i could go somewhere mm -hmm. i wasn't really supposed to go but also dude it's it's a book it's okay yeah 
Yeah. What about you, Carol? Yeah, I relate to that. And I like finding the horror too. And just like, like I grew up in a house where my dad was always reading it. And I scared really easily and in that rebellious way, leaned more into Sweet Valley High and things like that. Right. But then in finding like the horror in like 90210 and when Kelly is sleeping with Brenda's boyfriend and like, she's, you're never going to speak to me again in the spine chills. So in that way, anything I'm reading, I want to laugh and I want to have that chilling feeling. Yeah. And I love, and when you start to realize, oh, I can just lean into that and not feel like it's a bad thing, but a good thing. Right. Yes. With me, it was Poe uh, oh, primarily. My, my family had a, a, like a 10 volume set of the collective works of Poe that is still on my shelf right over here. <laughs> Uh, from the turn of the century, the turn of the, the 20th century. And but what really got me into horror was my mother was was and is a big horror fan, primarily of uh, movies, uh, old Universal Monsters and the Hammer films and that kind of stuff. And my dad was a cop growing up. And so he was gone lots of odd hours. And my mother would keep me and my brother and my sister up at night so she could watch these movies. So we get a very young indoctrination into this stuff. And really, for the three of us, the three older of us, uh, it really has stuck in some degree or another. I'm the only one who took it in the writing direction. But uh, and I assume you saw them all when you were really young, like oh probably, yeah, now, much too young, too probably. Young. <laughs> I still remember being really freaked out. The, the Universal ones were not quite so bad because they were in black and white, but mm -hmm. the Hammer films in color and all the blood and Christopher Lee looking like a freaky Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. I, that still really sticks in my mind a lot, but you know, I, I wasn't Caroline. What about you? I wasn't um, like one of those super young, like I hear people, they'll be like, I saw the exorcist when I was five. I'm like five. What? <laughs> what <is happening? laughs> my mom's car was in the exorcist. So I heard a lot about it. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. But I feel like Poltergeist was the one when I was young. And yeah. I looked, when I was a little girl, like I looked like that girl. So my brother was like, I think that that's you. And her name's Carol Ann and you're Caroline. And like, oh, man. there. And when I feel like because of the older brother, I saw things I probably shouldn't have seen. But, I was <laughs> but yeah, not at five. Like no, five, that's a little young. Yeah, I five. can remember my dad, my dad, cop, cop and a Marine, uh, coming home with my mom from watching The Exorcist. Exorcist. And I was, I don't know how old it was. 10 maybe 11 and i remember my dad being totally freaked out by it totally freaked out and i'd never seen Whoa. my dad like that before so i was That's like awesome. i gotta, That's I gotta really see awesome. this at the earliest possible opportunity so mm -hmm. i saw it when i was like 13 or 14 probably even then still too young but uh yeah i, I think it touches different people different ways but um yeah, I think most people who write this kind of stuff have kind of probably similar experiences, I think. So yeah, and um, like the, and you like to be scared. Like, I just like to feel like there's more to things than meets the eye. Right. I just I feel like that was one of my earliest things as a kid. Like when I saw someone strange right. in the air, like, I hope he's bur not burning. His, uh, not that someone's dead, but I hope he's burning a body. I hope something is going on. Like, <laughs> what, like yeah. yeah, you're no, I, I. It's, it almost has like, and, and whatever school that, that draws you in, great. But I think that for me, it's like, even now for the duration of the film or the book, or even this talk we're having, I'm able to believe it all. So yeah. there's a, like, I'm able to say to myself, like, this is possible. Right. And in that sense, I don't know if that's arrested development, if it is, okay. But like, that sense is like the key to loving this to me. Well, I, you know, I've always said that. Or I thought I, about I, that reading your story, Josh. Yes. Really? Like yeah. That particular aspect of like, I don't know, especially the way when it's four people seeing something together and the fact of them all seeing it together, like is, I don't know. Yes. It's fun when things are real that we don't think of as being real. Well, and I, I've always liked the idea that, that, you know, I may not believe in all this stuff, but I'd like to believe in a world where it's possible. You know, it's all this stuff is possible. So that keeps me kind of going when I'm writing. But uh, what about both of you? Both of you have uh, experience with novels and short fiction. So what do you, which do you prefer if you prefer either, or if you like doing them both, which is it about either format that appeals to you? I'm... 
I love again. both so much, but I like with a book, you get to write it over and over. You have all the time, right. like so much time. Like, you know, John, I went a little nuts with my ending and I, and I had to remind myself, no, this is like an anthology. Like it's going to press. I don't have, I don't get to send you like, here's my new version after it's copy edited. So I like them both for very different reasons. Cause the short story is like, you have to fucking do it just then. Right. Like that's right. It. And in that way you want it to like start in it and all of that. And that's where like, there's a specific energy in short stories that I love. Right. And I also love books for the opposite reasons. Like right. it's mm -hmm. couldn't pick. Yeah. I, what about you, Josh? I don't know. I think the novel is home. Uh, recently I kind of tested this theory with myself, which was writing the you go in the Cape, which you read John. Um, well, yes. Like a, it's like a thousand page book where I feel at home with like all that room. And I don't mean to be like, I'm so wordy. I can't shut up. But, <laughs> but the, the short story, sometimes I'll honestly look down and be like, what? How is this 6,000? I literally haven't even like said a word yet. Right. Thousands. Yes. I just think I, I'm just natural in the novel or something. But I think it's like the ultimate horror badge of honor to write a like classic horror short story right so it's like a, like a, a life goal or something like if you can pull off monkey paw if you can pull off um uh oh god i read a great one anyway um telltale heart i mean these are obviously giant sure sure still i mean someone in our era has got to write those right yeah, so right. like so i'm like man i want to pull that off i don't know exactly how it's done but the novel is home yeah I think you know with with the novel, it, it's nice to have the elbow room and the time to to dive into things. With a short story, I think it is. It it's that sense of you've got a certain amount of words to work with, and you've got to accomplish it. And you know, go. <laughs> yes, and, and I would have every scene go on like everyone just talking forever in a short story. It's like you can't, and yes, <laughs> yeah. you yeah, can, yeah. but then you got to. They just want to talk. Like why? Can't, they just can't talk for forty pages. Yeah. <laughs> um. I've got, see, I'm seeing a question here from Ross Jeffries. Uh, awesome. Uh, he's, he says he knows Josh listens to music when he writes. So what about uh, you and I, Caroline? And then what was sort of the soundtrack for the pieces that you wrote, if you can remember that? Ooh. Um, yeah, I mean, I do like, I like to listen to something over and over on repeat and then it kind of goes away. And I love right. when you don't know it's on or sometimes I'm like, what if I'm in public? I'm like, what are these things on my head? And it's like, oh, the headphones. And I didn't know. But since <laughs> seeing it writing at home more, it's more like a little and then that nasty hit of the mute button in a good way when I'm like, no more noise necessary. Right, right. Yes, yes. And you weirdly, what you like, this story is a 90s story and I feel like I'm never like... I, more modern things with this or not classical but like instrumental yeah you know? what about you josh you remember what you were listening to you listen to a I huge like, amount of music yeah i feel like this is going to sound egocentric but i for a while i was on um i was listening to the bird box soundtrack so the the soundtrack on vinyl is incredible it's like eight sides long and it's so much more music than is in the movie. Right. And Ross knows this. Ross and I have talked about this before. It's freaking perfect writing music. It's like, mm -hmm. it just stays right around here the whole time. Like, Caroline, you were saying, uh, listening to something on repeat, it, this kind of is like doing that for like eight sides. of yeah. It's like, it doesn't change that much in those eight sides. And so for a while, I wrote Mallory to that. I wrote, I think I wrote Mrs. Addison's Nest to Did that. Did you do well. the soundtrack? No. Did I do oh. it? Yeah. No, that would be, oh my God, that would be a dream. But I, <laughs> I am I am talking with someone about doing a vinyl soundtrack to a, a book of mine called Spin a Black Yarn. And I'm like really excited about that. But no, 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 no. I didn't do the soundtrack for, for the movie, no. Yeah, I can't believe nobody's put that together yet. Yeah. Having you do your own soundtrack to your own book. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they will now. Yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What's your process for when you start a project like this? I mean, Josh, you said you had an idea already kind of floating around. Uh, and I don't know where you were, Caroline, if you had an idea or not. But so, you know, you get the invitation from some schlub like me to do this and you get a deadline and away we go. So what do you do? Do you go wait to think for a while or do you immediately start putting words on paper or how does that work? I'm like, I probably turn on the TV and watch something and did anything but start. <laughs> I just kind of let it 
sit a while. And then I like to get into that. I think of it as like junkie mode when I have to do this now. Like it's in my yes. head and it has to go now. And then just That's the go. way I operate. Yeah, yes. the deadline. Oh, wow. I got I need to do that. Right I love now. a deadline. Yes. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm like verbatim what you two are describing right now. Like literally exactly the yeah. same. I'll be like, all right, I got to write that story. I'm going to go watch like 10 basketball games. <laughs> Right. Which is like three hours each. And I, I even watch, I'll even watch one from like the eighties and I'm like, what am I doing right now? I know how this ends. Yeah. It, you know, anyway. Oh, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, and then I'll have that moment, that click moment of we got to do this right now. Yeah. And then it's work, 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 work until it's done. And I'm, I'm even like that with novels. Are you two as well? Where yeah. the, like the minute the novel, the work on the novel starts constantly until it's done. Yeah. Yes, and that obsessive like can't stop, won't stop. Yes. yes. Yeah, I call. I tell my wife it's once I'm in the groove. Once you get in the groove, it's hard to get back out of that groove. So you got to finish, finish that before you do anything else. So yes. I get pretty single minded when I'm like that. Uh, and then when you try and go out and human and normal, and you just can't yet, yeah. and right. you're like, you can't talk. Like, yeah. but I think the funny thing is that most people don't realize how much thinking goes into all this stuff. That, you know, people just think that you're, you know, just plunking away the keyboard all the time. But there's a lot of thinking that goes into writing something like this. Absolutely. Um, I mean, to me, when you're watching the basketball game, you see it or for me, when I'm watching the season three of The Middle for the 10 million time, I'm like, I'm doing it in my brain. Yep. This is like letting my brain kind of relax with something and think it through. And then, yeah, the thinking is to me, I don't know. I think of it as almost equally important with the writing. Right. <laughs> like the difference between that and then this. Yeah. Let's let's talk about your stories. We'll do uh, we'll do a little bit about each of your stories, uh, and then you can then you can ask me about mine. Uh, but let's let's start with you, Caroline. Let's uh, tell me kind of how you got the idea, and and how it kind of played out in your mind, and then how that translated down onto the page. Yeah, I mean, I guess I feel like it was I was spending a lot of time in here a lot of time alone. And then for me, whenever I start to romanticize the past, that's when I immediately go back into, well, things were not perfect yeah. either. And then I started thinking about, yeah, like, cause I guess too, it was that time when everyone was like, thank God for phones. Like, look at how they, they're saving us in these times. And so it was part of that of like wanting to go back, like to write something in right. not just before times recent, but like really before times. And I don't have a sister. And that relationship fascinates me. And I think it was probably so much alone time that I wanted to imagine these sisters uh -huh. and what it would be like to like share this phone with someone. When we think That's of phone wild phone to, know, to, to know that, because I would have bet money that you had a sister. Same That's here. Like, I would have bet money. If I'm, yeah. If I'm doing something that I don't know about, it's like with you writing a boy's perspective, I'm like, That's why it's interesting. That's why it's fun. You know, right, like, right. Because I think of a phone as like, it's so possessively yours, but before cell phones, everyone shared a landline. And it just kind of started with that. And I love the idea too of like, girls get criticized or like for being boy crazy. And that's one of those things, like when I, I wrote an essay a few years ago about how the disappointment of looking at my diary from when I was a kid and expecting there to be like, right things. And it was like, no, it's fucking boys. Like, it's just, listen to <laughs> and I was like, well, that phrase, I kind of went with that phrase. Like, well, they're both go, they're feeding on each other and becoming boy crazy. And then the idea that there is a crazy man out there. Right. And, yes. And the danger of wanting attention and not caring about the source which to me is something that's in the world a lot right now. And then also on just for the title, when, when I rate a good friend of mine, whenever we talk on the phone, we're both like, write that down. And attentionist was one of those words. She was like, write that down. So yeah. that's a great one. Yeah. Did you have the ending in mind when you, when you started out? That's the thing. I went into book mode and I wanted to stay with them forever and just write thousands of pages of them just talking and fucking with each other's heads. But as we said before, a short story. And that's where I was like, I want four different endings. <laughs> I think that's the hard thing. And then you have to step back and be like, no, this is a story and it's got to hold together. Right. Right. And the ending, it's so different from a novel that way, you know? So, yeah, I think that uh, when I got the story from you, I don't know what I was expecting, but um it really blew me away and I decided to lead with it. And I wrestled with that for a while because uh, that expectation that, that a reader would have when they open up a, you know, a horror book that's, you know, going to be all horror -y and that kind of yeah. stuff. And, but then I, I just thought this is a, a perfect right up front is the perfect way and the perfect time 
to subvert a, a person's expectations about what the book is. Because the whole idea to me was sort of expand your mind about yes. what horror is. What you I love that introduction is. for that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm glad that I uh, led the. It, it it was it was a horrible choice to try to pick which story to lead because everybody really brought their A game to this. When John, when you sent me the order, I I remember I was like, oh, Caroline's first, and I was right, like, and then I was like, that's perfect, absolutely perfect. It yeah. made it made me think of like sequencing an album, yes. and oftentimes you kind of want to start with something like. I don't know how to explain it. It's not something that doesn't define the out of the, you know, like you're saying, you don't want to be the most horror thing of all, but there's something just real streamlined about your story, Caroline, and something real like, like it's like a straight silver line to me or something. And it's like here, this, like it's a freaking perfect lead off. I thought it was a brilliant move on your part. Yeah. I think and so many of the story, I feel like there are stories that leave you with like the question. And then this one isn't that way. So to me, that's where I think it works well. Yeah, I think that what I really liked about it was there's an ending and then there's the coda at the end, which sort of you think, OK, that's pretty creepy. And then you get to the the, the coda at the end. You're like, oh, my fucking God, <laughs> that's that's horrible. So uh, I thought that was a perfect way to kind of dive into the collection. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a great story. Uh, yeah, and, and it could and, be a whole novel. I could see that being, an could, entire yeah. Novel sure, and yeah. I think people would read the shit out of that. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Do you do that with yours? Do you then want to keep going? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think you always. Well, with me, occasionally you you hit on a character that you want to spend a whole lot of time with as the writer, because oh, yeah. for some reason or another, the voice comes easy, and it's an appealing voice to get your mind into. So I, 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 I fall into that. You do, Josh? Yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about Mallory in Bird Box. That's like, yeah. I remember when I met her, it was like, it was more than meeting a sister. It was like meeting like a twin sister. It was like, I I don't even have to think about who, I know exactly who this woman is. Right, right. And it was like the most liber, liberating, she's the easiest character I've ever written. And so even with the second book, Mallory, returning to it was like, it was, it's like, it's almost, writing her almost feels like too easy to me. Yeah. I'm like, hey, am I doing this right? Like, right. it's not always like this. And I now I, even, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say, I feel that so much because when I slip in Joe, I'm like, that was right. too fast. Like, why is this so easy? <laughs> like, you know, like. Yeah, it's, and it's like the warmest feeling too, as a writer, you're like, oh shit, I found it. It's almost mm -hmm. like bizarre love where, right. where, where, where you're like, Thank you, Mallory. And like sometimes when when the movie was doing well, I was I caught myself almost congratulating her, and I'm like, Mallory, right, this weird. they're not real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about your story, Josh? You said you had an idea for it that had been floating around. So for a long time, I have a friend named James Henry Hall, and we um, we're each other's sounding boards. So we'll send each other like, you know, uh, every weird little idea we have. And some of them will write back, yeah, yeah, that one. Most of the time we write back, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, James directs movies. And at some point I wrote him, um, you know, uh, we opened with a bunch of men and women are standing around a hole in the forest floor. They've tracked like a witch to this hole in the ground, you know? And then he's like, oh, this is great. You know, he's like, what's the story? I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. Isn't that good enough though? I mean, like, you know, don't we have enough to start? <laughs> <laughs> and so when I say I had the idea, I had a hole in the ground. Okay. And other men, men and women standing around it, like this is where she is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, thanks to the stories being a little bit longer, I was like, "Ooh, I can, I can tell the story of their first encounter. I can tell the story of like who they are now." And I've always been a fan of, um, how do you explain it? Like. Okay, in Twilight Zone, the movie and, and the episode, but um, it's a good life. Anthony, that can do anything with his mind. Uh, yes. send his sister into the cartoon. Right, right. His mouth, all that stuff. I've always been like, especially afraid of that sort of limitless monster that you're, I guess Pennywise is a bit like that. Like anything, yeah. goes, right? And to have like this witch figure that they that they're tracking who is maybe able to, um, screw with their reality, like, are you near me or not? Right. Or, or, or maybe you're just on a date right now, or maybe you're at the casino right now, or maybe you're just at home. Or, and then while you're at home, you look over, there's that hole in the ground, but it's like the wall 
and you're like, oh shit, no, I'm I'm not at home right now. Like that kind of like, you know, that all those elements together were like, yeah, this is good, this is fun or whatever. When he's in the uh, casino and there I saw that, I felt that that disturbed me because I'm like, that could happen in the casino after many hours. Right. right. <laughs> like, and there is an actual hole, you know what I mean? Like in a black jacket, like kind of yeah. 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 And I also like the way they're trying to get into that bar. Like they get in the bar. It was like this thing of getting places right. throughout the story that kept building and building. And yeah. And I always like that the, the uh, stories that have that uh, uh, cadre of friends who, oh, yeah, especially friends who, who come back to something after a while that, well, they, and then they look at it in a whole new way of like, oh my God, this is. Yeah, totally, dude. Do you do you two remember Fire in the Sky, the alien movie? Oh yeah, the tra- the Watkins thing, the alien kidnapping thing. Yeah, and yeah. like that's one of the first one of those I saw, where it's like I think it even opens with the other friends yeah. arriving at the bar, like looking like like what happened to our friend, right? And that concept of what you just said, like like we've been through something together, we right. something supernatural, something freaking insane together and now we're like just trying to have a beer and it's like no 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 like right right you gotta, you gotta go back and face this or fight figure this out that kind of thing that's fun the thing that i liked one of the things that i liked most about your story was the tattooing i thought that was such a brilliant <laughs> a brilliant way for these people to have a tether back to reality uh unexpected but really a, kind of a brilliant thing i, I really thought absolutely the way they all had it and they could tell each other yeah. like that was that nice bond and nice thing to be able to say to someone right you know, that's yeah. a good idea you know like that's a really good yes. yeah i thought that was really cool except maybe they should have been a little oh i don't want to be a spo- i don't want to be a spoiler <laughs> anyway, thank you is all i'll say <laughs> make it by the book so I also liked what you got into about them being like not bad. How it was just like they're they're bored, they're being themselves, and it was one of those like I liked that part of it a lot too. Yeah, yeah. About yeah, that it wasn't like malevolence. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not off yeah. the shrinks. It's right. like both, they found each other in the way those two when two groups of two come together, and then the way uh, yeah, I won't give anything away. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that that friend dynamic mm. was was really true. It really came off true, sounding true. So. And in that way, I do think that that could be a novel because I just wanted to know more. Like I wanted to spend more time in the casino. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow. Know. Okay. No, I like that. an idea. Seeing oh. what their lives are each like, like each one of those, I was like reading it again because like, oh no, more, more, more. Yeah. <laughs> How long were these? Were they like about nine thousand? Is that about right? ten, ten or eleven? Except for of oh, course okay. Langan, who not only came in last but also was twice as long as anybody. <laughs> oh, his is his is phenomenal too. His I, is phenomenal. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, uh, aren't my numbers enough to be like, okay, well, if this is ten, I only have to do this six more times and I have a novel. Like, what am I like, like totally do, go do it. You know, even if you just talk about nothing for for 60 or 50 more thousand words, you have a novel. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, the nice thing about Langan's story was, and this is another one of the serendipitous things that happened with, with Dark Stars is that, uh, you know, in the original Dark Forces, all the stories were short stories until you had the last story, which was The Mist by Stephen King, which was a novella or a novelette or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, so when Langan's story came in and it came in last, I was like, OK. And then it was like, you know, 20,000 words or something. I was like, OK, well, that might work if, if yeah. you know, if if yeah. this would be if this works out to be the last story that could really be a nice kind of callback to to dark God, that is that did work yeah. out well so you you didn't you didn't have to ask for it Mm-mm. it was like, I, same thing happened with ramsey campbell i mean i'd approached once i knew josh was going to write the intro uh i approached ramsey to write the afterward because ramsey was one of the original authors in dark forces mm-hmm. and uh he came back and not only agreed to write the afterwards but he you know he asked would you, how would you feel about a new piece of fiction? And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not going to turn that down. I I, I went to Josh. I told him, you know, you know, Ramsey wants to write a story. And he's like, well, how do you say no to Ramsey? And I'm like, well, you don't. (laughs) That's the short answer to that is you don't. But there are all these kind of little serendipitous things that happened with, with dark stars that I thought were kind of cool. Um, What do you want to know about my story? Okay, uh, I want to know everything. Like, I just the tenderness in there, 
And I, I was, I was so shaken reading it, like so immediately invested and I don't know. And then when they went into that bathroom, it's an, I thought it was going to be something else. So I just want to know where did that come from? Like the little baby, like it just. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I have kids, they're all, you know, they're all grown now, but you know, I, I've certainly gone through that period of my life when I've had little kids and, you know, all the stuff that you have to do with little kids and, and how they sound and how they act and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, hopefully I was able to bring some of that to the story. Um, I got the idea of the story just driving past the rest area. Dev and I, my wife and I were driving somewhere. I can't remember where. And we passed a, a, a rest area in Missouri. And uh, I just thought, God, you know, that's such a, they're such creepy places. Um, especially when you stop at one in the middle of the night and you, you know, you're you always thinking this is a great place for a, you know, serial killer to grab somebody or just something horrible to happen. And so I just thought it would be really great to set a story there. And so, you know, when I was uh, putting together the, the playlist, as it were, for Dark Stars, you know, I thought long and hard about having a story from me in it. But uh, I thought, oh, well, this is my uh, this is my thing. I'm putting a story in it. So uh, but then I, I started to have all the worries that you do about, you know, oh, God, is my story going to be the clinker and the bunch? And uh, <coughs> so I really held off until the last minute, the very last minute to write the story. So I and, you know, I had the, the idea for the story and I just started writing. It's, you know, I didn't really kind of outline it or think about it. I just started writing and one of my kind of came one of my favorite things about yours john is like it really is like the ultimate liminal space and like yes i was on the road with the band for like six years stopped at like a gazillion rest stops and every single one of them i'm like this place is creepy and never yeah. one time thought right about it never really? one time thought dude write a story about it they so, are such creepy places yeah, i mean i'm constantly looking for like a, a setting for and i'm like this place is horrifying hmm, i guess i'm gonna have to come up with a setting you can't walk in the mud without thinking the world is going to end in here and right, then that's right. i feel like when that snow is falling it's like yep this oh, is what yeah. i to happen in any restroom <laughs> yeah and uh you know and i like that idea of of having a a, a story where you have a small group of uh characters and you isolate them so isolated, not only just within the rest area, but also by the weather and the, the yeah. weird stuff that's going on. And so, yeah, it, but it, it was weird because it, I, I normally kind of try to think of at least the, either the beginning in the middle or, or the end or, but I, I never really, I don't really tend to write stories with almost nothing in my mind, other than the basic idea of it's going to be set in a, a rest area but it all it all came together pretty quickly so i was pleased so oh my gosh my cat just jumped on my whoops on my desk as we're like doing it oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, so hello. hey wow hello hi dude <laughs> I had so, to come back on screen because there's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it safe to go back in the water. Yes. <laughs> so let's see. Do we have any other questions here? Yeah, and I have a couple of my own as well. Sure. Oh, cool. So let's. Before we get to mine, I want to start with uh, a couple from the audience. Um, Howard asks specifically to John. I'm curious about the process of selecting authors for the anthology. Could you speak yeah. about how you came to that decision? Well, you know, I've been doing this for you know, like 30 years and um, I've reached the portion of my career where I've decided I'm not going to work with anybody. I don't want to work, don't want to work with. Um, uh, luckily, most everybody I've run into in horror is really great. You know, it's a great uh, genre for people uh, in terms of the authors that I've met. But, you know, I like to do these things to be able to work with authors that I uh, respect. Uh, I like their work. Uh, I've met them in person. Um, so Josh is a no-brainer because we have met, I don't know, all the way back to 2015, 2016, something like that. Um, Carolyn, I kind of knew from uh, another anthology that we were in, Lullabies for Suffering, 
which is uh, an addiction uh, anthology series, the newest one of which is out now. Uh, Just came out a couple of days ago, yeah. Orphans of Bliss. Orphans of Bliss. And yeah. I've got a story in that, and I know Josh has a story in that too. So, um, so yeah, it was a question, you know, to me, it was just inviting people that whose work I really liked and who I thought would be cool to work with. And I got really, really lucky uh, in that like 95% of everybody that I asked uh, said yes. And the people that did say no, it was all timing. It wasn't any other reason but timing. So, uh, so yeah, it's just a question of working with people I like to work with. Life's too short. You know, you want to work with people who are, who are good at what they do and decent people. Oh, this, uh, maybe since you've been doing this for 30 years and since you ask people that you enjoy the presence of, uh, have you ever asked someone for a story and gotten back something that you were just like, well, this is garbage. And how do I tell this person that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <specifics. you> know, <laughs> not for dark stars. Certainly not for dark stars. Um, I have worked on anthologies where I've had stories that I thought needed work. Uh, but I am of a mind that if a person is willing to get in there and work with me on the story, that I'm willing to, to stand by them and, and help them through it. Um, and that has proven to be really, I've been proven to be really lucky with that. So I haven't had anybody that I've worked with who has been um, horrible to work with in that regard. Because again, this goes back to codicil number one, which is only work with people you want to work with. So if I ever thought that I got pushback from somebody from a story that I thought needed work, you know, I just let it go. But I haven't, you know, I haven't had that yet. So that's a horrifying concept. I can't even do it. I can never. I, and and it's one of the things that holds me back from doing more of these is that I, I think if you just run the numbers, eventually you're going to run into that. And man, I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to have an anxiety to nightmare tonight that mine was the garbage. <laughs> no, nobody's I don't know what to do with it. Nobody is in, in your dream. Your story is literally returned in a garbage bag. Yes. Um, well, no, but I don't even know. And we don't have to go you ask another question. I don't have to keep talking. <laughs> I was just about to say, I don't even know if like, I'm like, I just, I can't even imagine thinking something's garbage. I'm really not that kind of guy. I, I think that, I think that most of the people that I would choose to work with, I'm pretty sure would not react negatively. If I came back to them and said, this doesn't work or that doesn't work. Right. Or, you right. know, let's think of it. So I'm I'm reasonably sure that I may never have to face that, but man, I'm not looking forward to it if I ever do. <laughs> uh, so the next question, I'm gonna say the question. We're gonna skip your answers so that you have time to think about it because it is the hardest question. Uh -oh. uh, so Ross is asking, "What's everyone reading at the moment?" And because every author no like everyone just like completely shuts down and blanks so i'm yeah. going to give you time to think and write down your response you, and we'll come back to it <laughs> like jeopardy yeah uh so we'll get to michael's question uh, yeah. michael actually uh, is one of our members and helps organize the reader beware uh horror themed reading group that we have for the store and Hi, Michael. <laughs> uh, Michael is asking, are there any themes that you find unite the collection? Overtly, no, I don't think so. Um, I think that giving the authors a little bit more time, a little more space to do their stories, um, allowed them to dive it deeper into the characters and settings and that kind of stuff. And um, I wouldn't say the story uh, stories have a tendency to be a slow burn, but it's not. I, I don't know that any of the stories are really punch you in the nose. You know, oh, in the first Caroline's kind of like that's what I mean. Hers is a great opener because that that one pretty much comes. Yeah. Down, whereas a lot of the other ones are a little bit more like we get we get there. Yeah. It is weird that there were. I, I know Jones, there were two... I was like, oh no, oh no, yes, like. <laughs> 
I know there were two stories that uh, centered around sewing, which I thought was really bizarre. Yeah, uh, yeah. Grant Jones's story and Livia Llewellyn's story, both yeah. about industrial sewing. Um, not just sewing, sewing, industrial sewing. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of weird. But yeah, I think that the, the not having, not imposing a central theme on everybody kind of ensured that, that there really wasn't uh, anything that was unifying other than just the, the, I think the desire among all the authors to really put their best foot forward. And the, the, I think the unifying theme between them all is they all make you crap your pants. <laughs> <laughs> to one degree or another in different ways yeah i mean yeah. So that was certainly the goal you just got to stay home away from everything but home's not safe either so you're right fine. exactly <laughs> yeah all right so now let's get back to the question ross question what's everyone reading at the moment well okay well i'll go first i've been reading this book what? this book crime novels of the 30s and 40s Ooh. and the one that I'm reading right now is uh, Nightmare Alley, uh, which is the novel that oh, was written by William Lindsley Grisham. Grisham. Um, it was the book from uh, that the uh, movie that uh, Guillermo del Toro recently did was taken from. Um, and I liked the movie, okay, but the novel is kick ass. I mean, the novel is really good. It's kind of noir and supernatural and <clears throat> carnies and you know fake spiritualism you know it's it's pretty cool uh you want me to go you want to go <laughs> okay, i have orphans of bliss the collection you were just talking about uh -huh. yes yes because that was the one a theme and i'd done one and the timing wasn't good <clears throat> i've heard so many great things about this one so i'm very excited for that that Mark Matthews put together, and he's great. He's and I love guy. Bad Cree by Jessica Johns that I haven't started, but I've also heard good things about. Has any, does anyone know about that? Mm -mm. No, it's one of those books. Like I, it's been hanging around me, and it's exciting that like it's time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah. When you're like, you know, I'm doing it. Here we go, and then you're like, all right, you know, I'm John Langan's new corpse mouth. Oh, I wish okay. I had that. I ordered it. Um. And Anne Rice, because I, I cannot stop. You're still reading, reading Anne Rice. Dude, I'm You're still, on that like, kick, yes. I am in like a bender right now. It's like, such a like, good feeling. Like, there needs to be a fourth uh, book of addiction just about me and Anne Rice. I can't, yeah. I'm like, I'm so deep right now, man. I'm walking around. Like 20 like, books in? I'm walking around in like fluffy shirts at night reciting my life story <laughs> like with, with glasses of wine to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> what is that like and are you like going one into the other like are you taking breaks for other things or like is it yeah no yeah i am but but there was an eight book run like wow. eight in a row when's the last time we did we went on a bender like that you know We're like yeah and uh it was awesome oh god i loved it i loved i loved it yeah she's I good loved it. yeah and it's really really good oh yeah um, I see a question by Ross Jeffries. Will we be doing future anthologies of Dark John? I guess there's a comma supposed to be in there. Dark John. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, we'll see how this one does. I've certainly got an idea for a follow-up. Um, I've also got another idea for another kind of anthology. Uh, so we'll see. We'll be putting some stuff in front of Tor Nightfire and seeing where they want to go. Yeah. But I think so far the the reaction to the book's been pretty good. So um, I I didn't get to answer uh, what I'm reading in the moment. Oh, yeah, I, I'm reading ahead. a I'm reading a queer rom com called uh, Chef's Kiss. So, oh, is that good? <laughs> it is really good. I yeah. saw that somewhere. I don't know where I yeah, saw that. I just I saw it on Twitter. Someone all I, very excited. Uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah. the name sounds familiar, so I think they're probably <laughs> on Twitter too. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to know that I'm not the only one reading it. <laughs> uh, so earlier you talked about The Exorcist, which happened in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. it happened, whatever, however you want to believe. Um, and John, I'm wondering specifically, have you been to any of the kind of real life uh, places that are in The Exorcist? I actually talked to the last priest who supposedly 
uh, was involved in all the proceedings. Um, I was kind of oh a precocious. God, I was a precocious young man, and it, it, you know, I found out about. I found out his name and just picked up the phone and called him. Whoa! And he was very old. He was in a. a oh my a, god, dude. That is such a short story idea. In and I of think the, the only reason he talked to me was he was shocked that I was that I would just pick up the phone and call him. Yes. Um, but he said, and to this day, I remember this. He, I, you know, I was like, yeah, did it didn't really happen or other things going on that? And he's like, I. He told me he said I saw things in that room that I never thought I would ever see in my life and have never seen since. And I was like, yeah. Eh? I don't know. Was it on the phone or did you talk to him in person? I talked to him on the phone. And then how long were you he, on the phone for? Well, he kept, I kept I was able to keep, keep him for about 15, 20 minutes. But at the end of it, he was basically said, and that's all I'm talking to you. Don't call me back and hung up. Done. Just just stay with me. Imagine a, a story <laughs> of like a guy, a girl, like a couple, or maybe two younger people, like let's phone the let's call the exorcist guy you know and then like what a great story like what a great framework that is that is a great framework. yeah like like the calling the exorcist and then like you may may have given me an idea now yeah Yeah. that is you you gotta run with that yeah Yeah. that is fuck that is good (laughs) like the best answer to a question ever (laughs) but I, i drove past the house where the people used to live i've seen the house in st louis um and uh, I've heard all sorts of stuff about the, the hospital in St. Louis. Election Brothers were the uh, part of the part of the elect of uh, the exorcisms took place, and heard all sorts of bizarre stories about stuff that happened there with them closing that room off permanently, sealing it up, and uh, uh, you know all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's it's a pretty interesting case. Yeah. Pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I like historical fiction. I wrote a book called The Bell Witch a long time ago, a long time ago. That's based on a poltergeist case from the 1800s that happened in the United States. And I went down to Adams, Tennessee, which, which is where it took place. I went down there probably six, eight times and poked around and talked to people and whatnot. It's it's pretty interesting. I have a, a deep and abiding interest in all that kind of stuff. Combine those experiences into the book when you're ready. There yeah. you go. That's a I good mean, idea. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm the kind of guy that has to like. I'm I'm scared of all that shit. I'm on like on a ghost hunt, and Allison's like dragging me in. <laughs> and I guess I'm like it's like. And then I was thinking, this is actually a great ghost hunter show. Like, dude's like horrified of everywhere he's going. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Like, every he has to face his fears and just get in there. I scare so easily. I've been like asked to leave a couple of movies because I'm screaming really? too much. Oh yeah, like, me okay. too. Me too. And my friends was like, I'm going to go I, sit in the back. Like, you're annoying. I'm like, Ugh. and then I sit and write the stuff. I don't know. It's, yeah. I went you're and saw totally Hereditary good. alone. Oh, why? Alone. You know, I was there alone. And there's that early scene where she turns the light off in the art room. Yes. Mom yeah. is by the shelf. I literally, I stood up. I was like, that one. nope, I can't handle this one. And I stood up and then I sat back down. I'm like, hey, Josh, you write the horror novel, dude. Like, dude, you're not leaving this theater. I felt like I was like my mom or something. Yeah. <laughs> My friends have really embarrassing video of me. She, we we're watching at her house, and I didn't know someone's taping me. Thank you. Oh, and, it was yeah. the and I just kept uh, being like, "It's a made-up story. It's a made-up story. This isn't <laughs> real." And I'm like, so, like it's "Yeah, same." Talking to myself the way you can when you're in the comfort of your. Of My somebody. wife will not watch this kind of stuff. She won't watch any kind of horror movies or anything. So I have to wait till she goes out of town. <laughs> oh, that kind of stuff. And so the <laughs> stuff that really scares me is like. UFO abduction stuff. I mean, oh, like shoot, supposedly true stuff. So I will glut myself with that kind of stuff and then go to sleep at two in the morning and lay there, oh. you know, listening to every little sign in the house, thinking the aliens are coming to get me. <laughs> Maybe tonight they will. Oh, it'd be a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caroline, I also have been uh, asked to leave. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this piranha is eating in a lake. Like, I'm sorry, this is not good. Like, yeah. <laughs> My friend took me to go see Woman in Black, the uh, Daniel Radcliffe, and yep. the entire audience was just like waiting for me to react so that they could all <laughs> laugh 
Gloriously. <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Like, I want to go see a movie with you. There you go. Oh, I'm a screamer. So <laughs> bring some earplugs. <laughs> Those are the best kind of people to go to a horror movie with. People like when react. you don't have the reaction to like everyone else is like kind of comfortably scared and you're like screaming. Or I went to see by myself, Igby goes down years ago. Oh, and yeah. I'm crying at the end and it ends and everyone's laughing and I got like mascara all over my face. I'm like, that was so sad. Why is everyone laughing? <laughs> there was the really beautiful cover of um, the weight at the end. You know, I don't know. To me, it was sad. <laughs> all right. Well, I want, I'm going to share the link again for how people can get a copy of this incredible book. And I want to thank you all so much for just this, really enjoyable and yeah. also slightly terrifying for conversation. <laughs> yeah, Shane, thank you so much. I just want to say real fast, I really like the dynamic of the four of us. I think I think the four of us made a good a good conversation. I just wanted to point that out. You'll I really have to like come it. to us. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to come with us, Shane, for future interviews. Yeah, yeah. let's go on the road. We'll hit the road, hit all the rest stops. The all I'm saying there is the four of us could we could really do something. We could be a band. We could. <laughs> <laughs> no stopping at rest areas, though. I can't sing or play an instrument, but I'm sure there's a tambourine or something. Neither, neither can I. <laughs> I do have experience booking bands now, Josh. So, yeah. Like, I'll just book us across the country. We'll go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. I also want to thank everyone watching, especially yes. uh, Libby chiming in, uh, who helped organize this event. Thanks. I want to thank just everyone Thank you all for coming out and uh, have a great rest of your evening. Yes, thank you. Thank